joining us on the program right now, Daniel Carey, NRA ILA's Colorado State Liaison. Daniel, thank you for your time, sir. No, absolutely, Cam. I appreciate you having me on again. You bet. All right, so we just talked about the uh, expanded background check bill uh, passing in the Senate, goes back to the House for a uh, concurrence vote. Uh, is there any chance of stopping it in the House? Because there's going to have to be another vote, right? There is. You know, I, I would like to say that uh, there is optimism for stopping it in the House, but after having seen uh, the behavior and the votes of those in the House when it went through the first time, uh, I think it's unlikely. I don't think that anything is impossible. Uh, we're continuing to reach out to our members here in Colorado and you know, our efforts here at the Capitol to do everything that we can to stop it. But I think that uh, those folks, both in the Senate and the House, who are in favor of these bills um, are doing everything they can to push them through and you know be done with it, so so to speak. Right. Yeah. So now the uh, the Senate is debating uh, the the uh, magazine ban uh, bill uh, again. All of these were. Uh, voted on on Friday, but this is the this is the recorded vote. So this is when the the senators actually have to put their name to these votes. And I know that over the weekend, Daniel, uh, a, a lot of these legislators, all of them, in fact, were were hearing from their constituents, uh, last minute grassroots lobbying. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's kind of one of the things that seems to be so effective for us and has been over the years is the power of our membership. I mean, without our members. We wouldn't be able to do what we do today, um, and they've not only heard them from them over the weekend. Our members contacting these legislators, but you know, throughout the course of this session, and unfortunately, our members and the voices of those who support gun rights here in Colorado have been ignored. Yeah, I know that uh, uh, the Denver Post reporting uh, even this morning that that Republicans uh, are still hoping that a third Democrat will come out uh, in opposition. There are already two uh, who've come out in opposition. Uh, are, are, Daniel, have you been talking to any members of the Democrat uh, side of the aisle today? Yeah, I mean, we've been trying to have continued conversations with these folks. Um, and I think that they're saying some things to the press that they're not exactly saying behind closed doors, which is that uh, they they really are in favor of these bills. Uh, you know, there's still some folks who may or may not be on the fence, and uh, we're continuing to have these conversations and encouraging you know their constituents too as well, so that you know hopefully as we're getting ready to go back onto the floor here in about 10 minutes, uh, you know, have this vote matter. Absolutely, because, you know, there were two bills that uh, were pulled on Friday. Uh, we're talking about five bills getting voted on today, but there were two other really onerous measures that uh, the sponsors pulled because they didn't have support. The, the the bill that would have taken rights away from concealed carry holders and, and told them they could no longer carry on a college campus, that that bill was pulled. And Senator uh, Morse, the, the president of the uh, state Senate, his bill, uh, seeking to hold uh, fire manufacturers and sellers responsible for the actions of criminals if those criminals use uh, what Senator Moores would define as a, a quote-unquote assault weapon. That bill also was pulled because of lack of support. It was. I mean, and, and Senator Morse's bill was probably one of the most fanatical pieces of legislation as it relates to definition of a so-called assault rifle. I mean, under Senator Morse's bill, he would have defined a Ruger 1022 or even the over and under shotguns that Olympians use uh, during clay and uh, heat shooting as an assault weapon, which was absolutely insane. And I think that having our folks continue to contact him as they did with all the other bills uh, had an impact with him. And I think that members in his caucus saw the fanaticism that was listed in that language, and they weren't going to go along with it, which means the votes weren't there. Uh, well, ab- absolutely. So, again, uh, you know, gun owners are doing everything that they can to make themselves heard. Uh, when, you know, when it comes to this magazine ban, I know that, uh, you know, the guys at Magpul, for instance, have said that they'll be leaving the state of Colorado. And, 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 and in response, Daniel, the gun control advocates here did something that I think is so hypocritical. They, they put in an exemption to this bill that said, uh, OK, we want your money and we want your jobs here. But we hate your product. We think you're horrible people, and we don't want your employees or anybody else in the state of Colorado to be able to actually own the things that you make. Uh, other, we, we think they're so dangerous. Other states can have them. You can sell to other states, but we don't want them here in Colorado. I, I just, that, I, I'm trying to understand the the twisted, warped logic of, in that position, Daniel. Well, I, I think that's indicative of the thought process that these folks who are voting in favor of these bills have had throughout the course of this session, both in the House and the Senate. And that is that it's not based upon logic. It's not based upon numbers with merit or facts or anything that's been provided to them. 
it's based upon their personal opinion, and it's based upon an emotional reaction to these terrible tragedies that have happened of late. And they are bent on pushing through their personal agenda, regardless of the you know thousands of folks who not only call but show up here in person and take time away from their family and their jobs to let their voice be heard, that these legislators, who again are voting in favor of this, are saying, we're going to do what we want to do, regardless of the repercussions. Yeah. Well, and, and to that end, you know, you, you, you know that some of them, Daniel, anyway, are thinking, uh, uh, boy, I'm glad I've got Bloomberg, who's going to be, you know, here to save me next year. Uh, it seems like, like, like 2014 in Colorado is really going to shape up uh, as a as a test between Bloomberg's billions and the real grass, the honest to goodness grassroots activists uh, who have been fighting these battles in Colorado for years. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens because at the end of the day, uh, his money can buy all the ads he wants, and he can get as many folks in here working uh, on the ground as he can pay to get in here. But at the end of the day, you can't change a vote. Uh, you can't buy the difference in a vote, and you can't buy the mindset of these folks who are upset due to these votes. So I, I think that 2014 is going to be kind of a picture that you saw in 94 after the assault weapons ban um, took place. And I think that you know President Clinton said it very clearly just here recently that you need to be careful of the way that you vote on these issues. And I think that that's going to be the picture that's painted here in Colorado and is probably going to come back to bite some of these elected officials in both chambers. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think you're right. Daniel, thank you so much for your time, sir. We'll let you get back to it, uh, but really appreciate the update, sir. Thanks, Tim. I always appreciate it. Thank you very much.